question that I'm asked now that I do have the title. What's the number one question? Mona, how do I win? How do I become the world champion of public speaking? How can you, how can you help me win? How can you help me win? The answer to that is you can win by not trying to win. Okay? Okay? You can win by not trying to win. DC of Ali, I think you touched on it when you said somebody joined the club just to win the, uh, the world championship of public speaking. What's his name or her name? Do we know her or him? Do they have a trophy yet? And we don't know how many years ago that was. But when you intentionally go into something with the prize in mind, as both speakers talked about, that's ego. What is ego for the young people who are here? Ego is a part of you that says, I'm the best. I'm the most important. It's all about me, 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 and what I can do, and what I can win. For the young people, that's what ego is. Ego says, I'm the biggest, I'm the baddest, I'm the best, I'm better than you, and you, and you, and you, ha, 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 that's why I'm gonna join Postmasters, just so I can get that trophy. <laughs> and yet you still don't have it. In 2015, I was on a roll. You said you in my speech you heard I was on a roll. I did a little shuffle. I thought I was on that. I had won at the club level. I had won the area division. Did all those. When I got to district, my ego was about this big. It was, it was huge because I just knew I was just gonna take it all. I was gonna sweep it. My speech was the best. It was better than everybody else's. I, I'm headed. I had already packed my bags for Vegas. That was the year of Vegas. I was ready to go. And then when they called my name in third place, I'm smiling, but I'm like, no, no, this is not happening. But I was led by my ego. And then in 2016, I did the same thing that gentleman did. I joined a different club just to compete. And I didn't even make it out the club level. <laughs> I didn't even make it. I lost to the club level. But I just was joining that club just to win, just to compete. Fast forward two years. 2018, I moved to Houston, Texas from Cleveland, Ohio. I have a new attitude. I'm, I just graduated from college. My life is pretty smooth. I do want to speak for a living. This is what I want to do ultimately. I love being a teacher, but this is what I want to do ultimately, especially if everywhere I go is like Dubai. Oh, God. Oh, God. I would never leave. I would never leave. So speaking is what I want to do ultimately. So Toastmasters is a great place to learn how to become a more effective communicator and a better leader. So I joined Toastmasters to become, well again, to become a better communicator and a more effective leader, or vice versa. Better leader, better communicator, both. And it was, it was genuine, it was genuine. And I genuinely wanted to make sure I sharpened my skills and I sharpened my saw and I polished my professional speaking. This was even before I was teaching. I didn't start teaching until August. I joined Toastmasters in January, I believe. My, my new club, my new club, the Cypher Super Speaker. And so I wanted to compete because competition is healthy. When you compete against other people who are better than you, you learn. You learn from your past mistakes. You learn those little things that, that, that you can see from other people who are more experienced than you. And so this time around, I just want to learn, I want to go in and have fun. I know I'm a great speaker, but I don't care about being the best, I just want to see what I can learn. And it's funny because at the club level, I was going up against my club president. He was the only person who joined the contest. And I was a little intimidated, and I was a little fearful, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. And I ended up being successful and victorious, and I won, and I was happy with that. But I didn't do a victory dance outside and say, yeah, head to the championship stage. I just said, okay, cool. Awesome. I got some feedback from some, from some of my club members. They said, do this or do that. Don't do this, don't do that. Okay, fine. Go to the area contest. I'm just going to have some fun. And I was competing in both table topics and the international speech contest. And both times I went in telling myself, let's just go in and have some fun. The area level, same thing. I did my speech did my table topics, and I had fun on the stage, and I was successful once more. Once I got to the division level, I was like, uh-oh, this is gonna be pretty serious, but I 
still want to have fun. Because I got this car last time, so let's see how far I can go again. I took that same feedback that I got at the club level, that same feedback that I got at the area level, and I brought it into the division contest. Have fun, same thing once. Now, we're talking about the district level contest. This is where I placed third last time. This is where my heartbreak came in last time. So it's kind of emotional, it's a little touchy, but I said, you know what, I'm not gonna think about that. So honey, I put on my best dress, some nice heels, I think I had these heels on. Some nice heels, and I curled my hair up one night, and I said, I'm not gonna think about winning. I'm gonna think, of it, I'm gonna think about going up there, looking good, like I usually do, <laughs> and, and just having a good time, because when you look good, you feel good. And I went up there, and I didn't care about the trophy that was behind me. I didn't care about what happened in 2015. All I cared about was getting up there and sharing my story. And I was able to do that, and I was able to win the judges over that time once more. Now let's go to the semifinals. I've never been to the semifinals before. I've heard stories about it. Of course, I've heard stories about sabotage and backstabbing and all oh, that's a crazy story. energy 
than, than the energy that was in that other speech that I had. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna have fun. So I'm gonna scratch this other speech. I'm gonna get rid of it. And that was Thursday. And so Thursday, I have nothing. I scratched my old speech, I threw it away, I forgot about it. Thursday, I have nothing. I'm panicking, I'm calling home, I'm calling my club members, guys, what am I gonna do? Oh my God, guys, I need a speech, I need a speech, what am I gonna do? I can't not go, I'm here, so I gotta go. So what am I gonna do? They said, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Stop worrying about it, go to sleep. So, Thursday night, I lay down, didn't think about a thing. <laughs> Woke up Friday morning, my brain was on fire. I felt the burn. I felt the burn Friday morning, baby. And so I'm just like, duh, 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 duh. oh snap, oh my goodness. Hmm, what's an international court? Boxing? I don't know how to box. I've never boxed before. I've never even punched anybody before. And guess what? I'm gonna look like I can. And we spent about eight hours in a hotel room, myself and about three other district leaders and two other postmasters. We spent about eight hours choreographing the speech and say this, don't say that. Do this, don't do that. And I didn't even have the towel till about 11 o'clock that night, the, the, the night before the contest. And we got the speech together, everything was great. And come Saturday morning, I woke up at about 4 a.m. I woke up at 4 a.m., I have my hair in the scarf, and I have on my Teenage Ninja, Mutant Ninja Turtle pajamas, and I'm in the hallway of the Marriott Marquis pacing, looking crazy, looking like a crazy one, pacing practicing my speech. And so once I had the speech memorized, I felt good. And once I felt good, I started to go back into that same mind frame of just have fun. Let's say that together. Just have fun. One more time. Just have fun. And that's exactly what I did. I have no secret recipe or secret formula for you to become the next world champion. All I can encourage you to do is just have fun. Because when I walked into that room at the convention, how many of you were at the convention? Were at the big, yeah, a lot of you guys, you are so supportive. I love y'all so much. I'm good. But there were people in Chicago who didn't come. <laughs> but when, when you walk in, the, the stage is huge. And it's just all this blue. And I became a fan once again because I watched so many other people on this stage. I've watched so many people there where I want to be, and I just was, I was, I was awestruck. I was starstruck, starstruck. Then I'm seeing Minoj, and I'm seeing Ed Tate, and I'm seeing all these previous champions, and I'm like, oh my God, you're that show, I know you, you were in my living room, you do. This became starstruck. And when I got backstage, I just got in my zone. I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go out here and have some fun with the audience, and that's what I did. When I came out on stage, if you, when we watch the speech, when I come out, I'm like, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> because I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm really in the present moment. I'm not thinking about who's gonna win. I'm not thinking about who won last year. I'm in the present moment, enjoying this time that I've been blessed to give. Enjoying this moment to be able to share my story with 2,000 people who have no idea who I am, but they came here and they want to hear a speech. And I got out there, and some people might say I made myself look stupid, but making myself look stupid got me the trophy, so I'm not mad at myself. <laughs> and aside from having fun, I want to encourage you to be yourself. You have to be yourself. Because there were some other people who I saw speak during the semifinals and even during the finals where I saw traces and elements, like strong traces and elements of past champions. And it's okay to draw a little bit from each one. But if you get on stage and they say, oh my God, that is so Ed Tate. Or oh my God, that is so Darren LaCroy. That's where their mind is gonna be. So you have to start getting comfortable in your own skin. It's just what Patty had us doing, angry and good. If you didn't do that because you felt uncomfortable, that means you're not really comfortable in your own skin. I can get up here and tap dance, and I, I don't even know how to tap dance. I can get up here and do a cartwheel or try to do some Bollywood stuff, and I don't, but I'm comfortable in my own skin. Raise your hand if you don't feel comfortable in your own skin. Anybody want to be transparent? I know somebody. <laughs> if 
you raise your hand and you want to start to try to change that today, I would like you to come up here and do something with me called Peanut Butter Monday. Come on.
sometimes I can be girly, I love my high heels, I love looking nice, but this is just who I am. So I encourage you to be exactly who you are. Don't try to be Ramona Smith. There's only one woman. There's only one woman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to be Ramona Smith. Be who you are if you're silent. You don't have to get up there trying to do this. If you're quiet, be quiet. Tell us your stories in your way. If you are boisterous and loud, then tell us your stories that way. You have to get comfortable being exactly who you are. And I learned that years ago when I took an acting class. And I was on stage doing an improv activity. Improv is when you do things off the cuff. I tell you to come up here and act like a frog, you act like a frog. And I will always hold back because I was afraid of looking stupid in front of other people. I would be up here and he would say, the scene is, you're cold and lonely. And I'd be like, cold and lonely. And he'd make me stop. He would say, no, give it to me. Make a choice. Stop being afraid of looking stupid in front of other people. When you're on that stage, nothing else matters except you telling me to do, you doing exactly what I told you to do. That's all that matters. So you have to know exactly who you are. You have to embrace and own your difficulties and your struggles. And you have to give a story that only you can deliver. I don't know how many other people in here dropped out of college four times. Anyone? Good, don't. <laughs> don't, but that's my story. I don't know anybody in here who has been married for less than a year and got divorced. That's my story. I don't know anybody who's already tried to attempt at the world championships, but, but you, you suffered a loss. Those are all my stories, and I can tell them well because they're my story, and I'm not afraid of people judging me or of people saying, oh my God, four times. <laughs> she must be dumb. Because <laughs> I can't congratulate Magna Cum Laude. Magna Cum Laude is like with, with, with high honors. I think it had like a 3.8 out of 4.0, so that's, that's great. But I'm not embarrassed or afraid to tell my story. And that's a part of being who I am. And that's a part of loving myself. And once I understood that it was okay to be myself, I ran with it. I ran with it and I'm happy. And I, hopefully right now I'm communicating happiness with you guys. I'm smiling, I'm not up here sad and sullen. So hopefully I'm communicating that happiness that's gonna be in your d -pad. I hope you go, hope you all go. So I, I really encourage you to learn how to embrace the beauty that lies within yourself. It's very important to go deep within and learn and figure out who you are. Because before I had the title of world champion of public speaking, I was already a champion. Don't get it twisted. Don't let a title make you who you are. Because next year, when the next person gets it, then who am I? If the title defines Ramona Smith, then who am I without it? That's a part of ego as well. If you are what you have, then who are you if you don't have it? So I don't want you to get wrapped up in the win and wrapped up in the title and wrapped up in being the world, being called the world champion of public speaking. Because guess what? If I wouldn't have won it, I wouldn't have went home crying. I would have told myself, well, you know what? You have fun. You have fun. You enjoyed yourself. You enjoyed the experience. We have to stop chasing after titles and chasing after things that, that are external that we feel like are gonna make us happy. You have to have it in here first. And I feel like that's why whatever God you believe in or whatever, you, whatever higher power you believe in or if you don't believe in anything, something or someone <laughs> said, Ramona, this year you're gonna be a world champion of public speaking. But I already had it in here that I was complete and that I was awesome and amazing without it. And I think, DTM, I leave you touched on it, I believe, or I'm, I'm not sure if it was Patty. But you don't have to try to be something above and beyond. Because I can sit here and say, I'm the world champion of public speaking, ha, ha, ha. And if I was trying to actually be that, I forget which one of you talked about it, but you, you said that, uh, there were no world champions that were arrogant. There were no world champions that were evil or mean or like, nah, I'm not, I'm not. Shoot, I'm not taking your picture, I'm the world champion. 
I don't have that mentality. And I don't think any of the other, I, I, Mark Brown doesn't have it, and Darren McCord, and Jim Keith, no, none of us have it. And so it takes a special person to even fill these shoes. Because you have to consider the person that you are. Who are you? Do people like you? Do people really want to be around you? Do you like people? <laughs> you might not like people. It's not a lot of people who can stand up and take pictures with people who they don't know over and over and over again. Or it's not a lot of people who are willing to travel 7,000 miles away from their families to be in a different country. So it takes a, a, a different type of person to even be placed in this position. But I feel like everything happens for a reason and all of the things that I went through in my life kind of set me up for this moment. Because I've been through some things that a lot of people can't survive from. I don't know if, I, if you guys have already heard the, the, the story about my son Ryan. But my son Ryan was diagnosed with a cancerous brain tumor when he was two. That's very, very hard to deal with. He's my first child. I did everything I can to be the best mom in the world. Mom, raise your hand. Let's clap for the moms one time. <laughs> if you don't clap for a mom, I'm so sorry because she's the reason why you're here. But being, being a mother it was probably one of the, the, the best things that ever happened to me. And when you're a mom, you just kind of, even, even for, for women who can't physically have children, but if you raise children, if you've been around children, you become attached to them. They become your everything. And so I was that mom. I don't know if you guys know any that moms, but I was the mom taking the parenting classes, eating all, giving all the organic food to my baby, and no, don't do this. No, don't do, no, don't touch him like that because right here on page 272 it says that you shouldn't do that, so no, don't do that. <laughs> I was that mom. And I nursed my son for 13 months. And I don't know how big nursing is in the Middle East, but in America, a lot of young African-American mothers don't nurse their children. And so I nursed my son for 13 months, and we had this beautiful bond together. I didn't drink or smoke or I wasn't stressed out during the pregnancy. I thought I did everything the right way. And then one day, he got sick out of the blue. And of course, I'm trying to figure out what is it? Is it fever? Is it a uh, headache? What's wrong with my child? And so we took him to the ER, and at this point, his eye was deviating towards his nose, and his tongue was hanging to the side. And when the ER person saw that, she knew that it was signs of neurological issues. That means something dealing with his brain. So they gave him a CAT scan, and sure enough, they found a cancerous brain tumor about the size of a small orange growing in the back of his head. My first thought is, how? Oh, I did everything right. I was the organic mom. I was the whole foods mom. I was the all natural, healthy. How could this happen? And of course, my second thought was, why? Why is this happening to me? Why me? I don't deserve this. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm almost a perfect mom. Why is this happening to me? And he, he, he made it through. He made it through. He had to have three brain surgeries and 30 radiation treatments. But four years later, cancer free. You can't see any. He didn't have any signs of what he went through, and, and that's beautiful. But now that I understand all the hardships that I have to endure, I get it now. Because this world championship of public speaking is bigger than me. If I get up here and I have no story of struggle and no story of obstacles, and no story of triumph, I don't feel like we would be able to connect. If I got up here and I said, my life is great, my life is perfect, I'm rich, my husband is handsome, and I graduate. <laughs> <laughs> then it would be like, oh, okay, all right, get out of here, that's, that's great for you. What about me, my husband's ugly. <laughs> champion of public speaking for the next few months is I want to serve. 
how can I serve you other than giving you the formula to win? I don't have one. Besides that, how can I be of service? You can, you can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or email. Ask me if we have a Q&A coming up. Please ask me questions. How can I be of service to you, fellow Postmasters? I've been in Postmasters for eight years, and it's all about service. All the leaders is servant leadership, and that's exactly what I want to do. And also, I want to give hope to the people who look like me, to the people who don't look like me, to the people who come from where I come from, and to the people who have never been to the U.S. I represent several demographics because I'm now the, the world champion of public speaking. I represent, first of all, women. Hey, ladies. <laughs> I represent women. I'm only the second woman of color to win this award in its history. Or do, do reach all of your goals this 
this year because you kind of have no excuse. Because women, since it is our year, we kind of have a responsibility to step up and become leaders and become officers and become those, those, those roles and, and, and take up those roles and responsibilities in our club. Man, I know you felt left out. I love you. I love you, man. Because you are strong. You are the protectors. You are the providers. You open up the gates for us when, when we couldn't even walk in. I know it was some, you know, thank you. <laughs> I know there were some men in the 70s that said, you know what, my wife really wants to compete, but she can't, that's not fair. Or my daughter really wants to compete and she can't, but that's not fair. Let's do something about this, let's turn it around. So man, I thank you for using your intelligence and for using your, your provision and your protection to help us and to build us up and to keep us, to keep us sane and sustained along the way. Men, we cannot do what we do without you. We cannot get pregnant without you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for raising our sons. Thank you for being the strength in our family. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for helping us over that puddle. Thank you for opening our doors. And thank you for paying for everything like you always do. <laughs> thank you so much. I guess I've been talking for 45 minutes, so I better wrap it up. In general, what I want to leave you with is I'm here to serve you as your world champion of public speaking. I'm here to give you hope as your world champion of public speaking. And if this is going to be you next year, I encourage you to do the same thing. Ladies, it's our year. Come on. We have to, we have to be empowered. We have to learn who we are and love who we are. Fellas, we need you to empower us. If there's a, if there's a door that's unlocked, we need you to kick it down for us, okay? Use that strength in the end. Kick it down for us, okay? I'm here to serve. I'm here to give hope. Thank you so much, and congratulations to whoever is next year's world champion. Thank you, guys.